while the two young gentlemen bring those little uh, posters, I would like to just say thank you so much and for the privilege of inviting us here, my wife and my two kids, to come here and to worship with you. Uh, thank you so much for being kind. Thank you, Shelley, for those beautiful songs. It's so uh, much relate, related to what I'm going to talk about. Something beautiful, something amazing, something fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, I also would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, um, David and Brenda, who are part of this team at the conference, who work with us to facilitate this process of how we reach out and tell this amazing story. So thank you, David and uh, Brenda, who are here, who are part of the executive committee, and who are such an amazing, uh, highly intelligent people who make it, who work with us so well to make this thing happen. So thank you so much for your input. Now, you will ask the question, what's this treasurer from the conference talking about health? Right? I've got to tell you a bit of a background of, about me so that what I say has more credibility. All right? <laughs> okay. Before I, came to, before I came to Australia, I had a couple other degrees in science, and I have also masters in public health. Lectured for a few years in the sciences, went to Australia, and as the usual story, anybody from a foreign country comes into a developed country, your degrees are looked at it, looked at with a big question mark. So I had to completely change career and do a Bachelor of Business in Accounting, and of course my CPA followed on. So that's how for the last 18 to 20 years I've been working within the Australian, Australian, New Zealand, the South Pacific. I spent well, almost eight years in Fiji where I got married to Anne. So all in all, it's been in finance for the last close to 20 years, but before that, it's been in the sciences. So, but my passion has always been how fearfully and wonderfully we are made. And the more I study, and if you, the library I've got, if you go to the, you know, you know where do you read most of your books at home? You know, right? There's a lot of medical books and health books. I, I just love it. And I, the more I study, the more I look in deeply into how amazingly we are made, the more I'm just amazed at God's creative genius. He's, he's, we are a masterpiece. Do you realize that? We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And when the psalmist said that, you know, I like this picture because it gives us a macroscopic God, a big huge God and also an ultra microscopic God. It's, he is so big. He is so amazing. Do we realize today the macroscopic God makes it possible that we don't blow into oblivion. This little speck in our Milky Way galaxy, so small, insignificant, controlled by some processes that God put into place, gravity, electromagnetism, that we don't blow into oblivion. Do we realize that as we sit and talk, as we talk and look at each other, we are rotating on our own axis at about 1,600 kilometers per hour. And on top of that, we are falling around the sun at over 100,000 kilometers per hour. The, the, the sun itself is rotating faster than us falling around the sun. And on top of that, the Milky Way galaxy is just, it's amazing, the macroscopic God. And then, he, then today we are going to talk about the microscopic God. You go deeper and deeper into this masterpiece he created in his own image. And what do we see? Wow. The psalmist, I believe, he knew when he talked about this. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Now, I like the uh, uh, new international version. It's more relevant to a younger generation. I will praise you, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that so well. And I believe the psalmist, David, he knew when he said that. 
he knew exactly how amazingly we are made. When he said fearful, is, that means, wow, you, you know, just, just common sense tells us we are created in his image, right? Isn't it? So therefore, when the psalmist said that, we are fearfully, wow, God, you created such an amazing masterpiece. You are and I are a masterpiece of his creative genius. And wonderfully made. We are unique in our own way. Each and every one of us are unique. But amazingly, amazing. We just, the more I dwell deeper and deeper, I love to study the human self. Wow. It is a wow. I like that. It is a real wow. And the psalmist knew when he said that. Now, I like to put that amazing picture of this great God into this concept of us. This masterpiece. We are just caretakers. We are just stewards of this amazing God's handiwork. So we have a responsibility, you and I, to use our time, our talents, our temple, and our treasures because God is sovereign. He owns everything. So that's why we return something. You know, when you return, we make it possible that we can then go and tell this amazing, powerful God story. There is hope. He's going to come back and take us to this amazing place. Right? So you make that possible. Are, are we using this amazing masterpiece, our talents, our time for God's, God's purpose? Is it purpose-driven? Today we're going to talk mainly about this amazing temple. This amazing, beautiful temple. But it's all in that picture of stewardship. And it boils down to again this, I strongly believe this, the core, the core is that relationship. You can do, we can do everything to earn merit points, can we? No, we cannot. That, those, we do beautiful things for God because we have a core, a spiritual relationship. It's all about Christ and that relationship with our God. As a result of the relationship, other things would flow into place. It doesn't become an issue. The law doesn't become an issue. Isn't it? It's common sense. It's, if that relationship is so solid and strong, it's, to me, it's not, uh, this is a, an opinion. We got to keep alive and connected every second. Any decision you make, in our humanness, we, we make errors. But we got to constantly go and ask God, please. You know, the other day I was riding, I'm a cyclist. I was riding down a hill, Bombay Hill, and we were traveling at uh, about 80 kilometers an hour when somebody overtook me. And I, this is downhill, right? Downhill in the cycle, not a motorbike. It's, it's just a push bike. And I just passed this guy, and I didn't know what I was doing because we have these computers. And when we came to the bottom, we stopped. And he asked me, what were you doing? I said, well, looked at my computer. 83 kilometers an hour. And I was just thinking, man, while I was even doing that, I was praying to God, please, Lord, if I come off this bike at this speed, I am toast. I am history. You know, not only that, even when you're riding, when you're doing it, when you're driving your car, because you never know when you can, when you just, it'll happen. Therefore, the need to be alive all the time. And as a result of that relationship, the whole process of the wellness dimension, that holistic man becomes a beautiful thing. Now, we got a problem in our society. I'm going to go through this because now we're going to talk about this amazing masterpiece. Now, I come from a third world country, origin from Sri Lanka with a bit of an Irish flavor. It's uh, it's a little bit of Irish because we were colonized by the British. So my forefathers, my mother's dad's father was an Irishman. He was married Sri Lankan. So we've got a bit of Irish flavor. I'm the black sheep. My other brother is a kind of, you know, when I say black sheep, you know what I mean? Um, the dark one. The other one's a fair, blue-eyed. So my daughter, my wife's part German. She's Samoan, German, Tongan. So my daughter's got uh, Irish, 
German, mixed, so she's got blue eyes. So, uh, anyway, so coming from a third world country into the first world, right? One of the biggest problems I've seen in these first world countries is what? The leading cause of mortality is that coronary heart disease. It's the biggest killer in this society. It's affecting this amazing masterpiece God created in us. Even among the Adventist church, this is a big problem in our society, coronary heart disease. What are the responsible agents, the risk factors? High blood cholesterol, smoking, of course none of us smoke, so that risk factor can be completely el eliminated from the picture, hopefully. High blood pressure, the deadly silent killer in our society. I'll just quickly go through that in the next slide. Diabetes is right up there as a killer in this uh, affluent society. Physical inactivity, I use the word here, hypokinetic disease. The word hypo, I'll use some medical words, but I'll always break it down. Hypo means low. Kinesis is a word meaning energy activity. Hypo, low energy activity. Hypokinetic disease, the biggest cause of coronary heart disease. One of the biggest associated causes. Obesity. You know, I do a number of these... Um, seminars uh, when I go around the regionals and I do uh, the BMI testing and high blood pressure testing and I'm amazed among our Seventh-day Adventists who are supposed to have the message we are suffering the same effect and I'm really sh surprised now just a quick one here the deadly silent killer is high blood pressure see if you're over 140 that's the systolic that's when your heart I'll just go through that in a few minutes this thing is kind of falling apart, but that's okay. It'll come back into place. Um, so most of you have taken your pressure. Over 140 systolic, that's when the heart contracts. That's the systolic part, the high part when you take it, when the doctor's taking it. The diastolic is the lower one, which is when the heart relaxes. So anything over 140, just keep an eye on. Over 90, the diastolic, just keep, just try to do something about it. But you can reduce that. We'll talk about it as we go along because we want to talk about this amazing God's masterpiece that simple things can make a difference. Causes of heart failure. And these are the big words here, myocardial infarction. You all know that. These are big words in the medical world, but I'll break that down. We'll go through quickly here. And in myos means muscle. Cardia means heart. Infarction is death. So myocardial infarction, nothing but heart disease, heart, sorry, heart attack. Coronary heart disease, sorry, somebody said something. You can say things when you talk about Valve disease, hypertension, we talked about by high blood pressure. This idiopathic cardiomyopathy has just been unknown origin of cardiomyopathy. Cardia is heart, myos is muscle, pathos means disease of the heart muscle. So simple, when you break it down, it's really simple words. Viral, bacterial stuff. Um, am I not pressing it properly? What's happening? Oh, sorry. Oh, this just another few problems that cause heart disease. Pericarditis means the pericardium is the covering of the heart. Inflammation and itis is an inflammation. Diabetes, congenital heart disease. You're born with a disease. Thyroid disease. So this is just a quick thing about causes of this amazing, beautiful heart. Now, the Lord did something amazing in this masterpiece. Every single individual cell in your body has the blueprint to become an exact replica of you. There is the 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs that are embedded in Every single individual somatic cell in your body that has the blueprint, the genome, to become an exact replica of you. This is the only cell in your body, the red blood cell, that doesn't have the nucleus. But it does an amazing function. Just imagine, it's the most simple of all cells. But in the process of, of this genesis, if you use the word genesis, in your, in your bone marrow, it, it has the 23 pairs, but when it grows into the adulthood, it, the nucleus is removed because the Lord uses that. 
in a special way to carry what you are just now breathing, the oxygen, life-giving oxygen that you're breathing involuntarily, so that it is taken right down at the cellular level. This amazing red blood cell carries water with the hemoglobin on it and oxygen through 100,000 kilometers of blood vessels. Wow, isn't that? You are a masterpiece. That's three times around this globe. 100,000 plus kilometers of blood vessels, trillions of blood vessels, and it takes out the carbon dioxide that is utilized within the cellular metabolism back through your nostrils out into the air so that what uses that carbon dioxide? The plant life, photosynthesis. That is absolutely amazing. They give out oxygen that we can breathe that is so vital for our existence. And the Lord uses the red blood cells to carry this right throughout this 100,000 plus kilometers of blood vessels so that you can, I, I can have life. That's what it looks like. That's amazing heart. Now I would like to ask you, please, can you do that for me, please? That's about this. Just lean it again, a little left towards your left side. Lou, you got a big heart. Look at that. Ooh. <laughs> That's about the size of your heart. That amazing piece of machine, I'll go through very quickly. That takes this red, this blood, deoxygenated blood from your bottom part, from the top head part, through and through to the right atrium, which contracts. When it's systolic, it contracts, and it goes into the ventricle. And from here, something amazing happens. Something amazing God created here too. Deoxygenated blood or bad blood is carried always by the veins, the venous system. Now, when I use, my, my wife is laughing at me because sometimes I can't pronounce the word V and W. We Sri Lankans have that problem. So she's smiling at me. And when I was in Australia, my Aussie friends would just crucify me when I use some of these words. So the venous system. V? Is that better? <laughs> so. But the Lord did something amazing here. The venous system or the veins carry the oxygenated blood or the bad blood filled with carbon dioxide and waste products. But for the first time in the physiology of this human organism, the Lord put uh, an artery from here through to the lungs to carry the oxygenated blood. Why did he do that? Because he thought, if I put a vein in there, it'll, because of the contraction of the heart, it'll just blow it up. So God put a flexible artery to make sure that the deoxygenated blood is carried to the lungs, oxygenated again, and carried back into the left atrium, put into, as it contracts, into the left ventricle, and it's this amazing reoxygenated blood. Oh. It'll, I'll, I'll need it a little bit later. Carried to various parts of this amazing body. Now, just to show you how amazing God is, eh? look at that. The pressure here, that's the systolic and the diastolic here. And as you go along through the, into the arterioles, the capillaries, veins, and the vena cava, there's no pressure at all. But... This can increase into the 140, 150, 160 systolic when the resistance is greater in the lower parts. Okay? High blood pressure in your, in your heart, the coronary arteries, these amazing arteries that feed your heart, the leading cause of death in our society. It's almost very minimal, but if the resistance is there at the... At the uh, other levels, you increase the heart's ability to pump. Just, again, a common sense thing that we need to understand. Cellular exchange. Now, this is, ah, this is fantastic. When I was doing my master's, we, we did a study. Ellen White said, 100 years ago, sugar clogs the system. Right? And, you know, okay. We actually subjected a, a, a group of people to high doses of... Um, refined sugar, okay, periodically, throughout the day. And then we look, took an ophthalmoscope, which is a scope that looks at the capillary movement. That's the capillary, okay, to see how the blood, which carries oxygen and nutrients to the various parts of the body, how do they move? Normally, red blood cells, this is an electron micrographic uh, picture, 
Okay? Normally, blood cells move individually, single file. What happened? Can you guess what happened? The red blood cells started to clump together, closer and closer. They were drunk with too much of highly refined intake of sugar. That it was amazing. So that's a, she said that 100 years ago. Now we know today that an over-excessive amount of refined sugar has an impact on your immune system, has an impact on how you function. It's again a common sense approach to see what excessive. Now please remember, I use the word excessive amount of refined sugar, what it does to the system. It has an impact how you function physiologically. Again, a common sense approach to how we deal with some of these lifestyle related uh, problems. That was actually mind boggling just to see that. And not only on top of that, the immune system, which is called a phagocytic index. The word phagia means another Greek word meaning to engulf or to eat. You have these cells in your body called macrophages. They go around looking to see, because we are constantly bombarded with all sorts of different types of organisms. Viruses, bacteria, some form of different types of pathogens. But this amazing immune system so amazingly created. Look at this stuff here. This is all the various parts of your immune system that are waiting, ready to attack and to protect you. But with a high intake of refined sugar, what we saw was we looked at the index of how the immune system attacked and destroyed. The index significantly went down as a result of the higher intake of sugar. The, the index of fighting went down. You know, I've done the same thing in my own life. Subjected, experimented it. You feeling a bit funny. Drink an excessive amount of sugar uh, in your know, fizzy drink and see how your system, your throat, just test it out. You know how the impact on your system. Just experiment yourself and see. Now, this is where everything happens. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. We are made up of trillions of individual beautiful cells. Ultimately, everything happens, ladies and gentlemen, at cellular level. All the mechanical breathing, the food that we take in, ultimately flows through your circulatory system right down here at cellular level. And at, those cell, at the cellular level is where everything happens. DNA. God's double helix. That is, to me, that is such an amazing part of you and I. The masterpiece. The controller of every individual cell, the nucleus. Within that nucleus, as I said before, it has the genetic material to become an exact, exact replica of another you. It has the 23 chromosomes to become an exactly. Now they're cloning today, you know, they clone uh, plants and stuff like that. But that has the blueprint. And you know, when uh, actually, some, when I was preaching in uh, Tauranga about six, seven weeks ago, I couldn't, we slept, we stayed at uh, Pat's place. And uh, I couldn't sleep that night. Um, because when, uh, when I have to preach, I can't sleep very well. Because, you know, I get all nervous. But, you know, something really, um, uh, I, I've got to read you this. Ah, yeah. Something came to my mind about 3 o'clock in the morning, and I thought, wow, no wonder we don't understand. I, I, I then wrote this down. God made the creation story so simple because it was immensely too complex for man to ever understand or comprehend. That story of the creation process was very simple. But we'll never understand because of its complexity. It's just absolutely mind-boggling. Just, just for me to think from a scientific background, when God made an effigy of man and in his image, and he breathed in through the nostrils the breath of life, man became a living soul. To me, that is so simple, but that we never will understand that. So in my scientific mind, I think, wow, I want to ask him the first question I'm going to ask him, God, how do you make DNA? DNA controls everything within each individual cell. 
please, Lord, tell me how you did that. He made us perfect. Didn't he? In his image, he made us perfect. So we had to be so perfect, an amazing masterpiece. He had to make that, wow, right? We screwed up later on, right? But he made us perfect. And that DNA right within each individual cell. And please don't, you know, sometimes we think um, we are inadequate. We, are, we don't have talents. We don't. No. You and I are masterpieces. You've got to say, thank you, Lord. You made us so amazingly, so beautiful. We'll have our differences. We'll have our certain ugliness in us. But remember, all of you, we are all amazing masterpieces. Amen to that. Isn't it? Amen to that. And I'll tell you something. This DNA, wow. I want to ask him, Lord, I want to, please tell me, how did you put that all together? If this particular um, enzyme is, uh, sorry, uh, Nutrient comes in. What this, if this comes in, then you've got to use this to make this. That's what it is. It's all programmed. And you know the funny thing is, this is this, uh, again, it just intrigues me. The Lord said, after he saw, when did he say? You tell me. I'm not a pastor. So you know, I was called pastor. So I, I don't have that privilege. That's why I tell Eddie and Ben, I am, um, uh, what's he, what do you call I'm privileged always to be uh, in front of pastors because I think they got the biggest job. Uh, it's just a tough job. I'll never be able to do that. And I really uphold ministers, dedicated, passionate, committed ministers. I use those words there. And I feel very privileged to be among them. Anyway, why did I say that? <laughs> I can't remember why I said that. Okay, anyway, it'll come, it'll come. Can you, can you remind me why I said that? Any reason for that? Sorry? Oh, yeah, DNA. So what's that to do? Sorry? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, anyway. Uh, well, I, I don't know why I brought that out, but what I'm trying to say is, I'll, yeah, I want to ask my, my Lord when I get there, please show me how you created this amazing you and me. I want to know. I want to know how DNA works. I want to know how this... Oh, yes, I know why. Yes, I know why. Yes, when... Uh, that's why I said I'm not a pastor. When uh, the Lord looked and He said, This man I created, I, I don't want him to live 800 years. I'll only make him three scores a year and ten. Isn't it? 80 years, 70, 80 years. He said that. And you know what? Bang! That's what it is. How could He have done that like that? It took a bit of time. But that process of degeneration, by the time you're 20, 21 years of age, we start to die. We sl start a slow death till we, you know, reach adulthood, you know. You can see that. I, I mean, I've watched this and I've seen that. But we can have that quality. We can uh, reduce the risk and have greater quality and greater, because of the association we have, our relationship with our God, we can have amazing quality. Even though we are slowly dying because DNA has been programmed. It's amazing. There's a thing called telomeres. Tel at the end of each chromosome, it gets short and short and shorter as we get older. That's amazing. I want to ask him, Lord, <laughs> how do you do that? He came and said, okay, I will make sure those telomeres start to get shorter and shorter and shorter. And the lifespan is only maximum, maybe 80 to 100 years old. He reprogrammed that. So that man, if it's all, you know what's happening today? I was reading something called the concept of singularity. It's a big thing. How many of you heard that? Singularity. It's a, it's a university today. NASA is funding it. Google is funding it. Where they are saying that within the next 25, 30 years, there won't be mankind. There will be what kind? Machine kind. The concept of singularities comes from the uh, world of astrophysics, uh, where, where there is, is a point of time in space, like what happens in a black hole. Nobody really knows what happens in a black hole, even though we can speculate so much today. But that's what they're looking at. But I'm telling you, this God is just amazing. He's just fantastic. It'll never happen because my God is in control, just like He's in control of not making sure this little beautiful speck in our galaxy which is 100 billion light years apart. Can you just imagine that? He's in control. 
because he loves us he gave his life for us so that he will i want to go home do you want to go home of course that home is going to be here right correct revelation says that we'll come down here it will be a beautiful place no sickness no dying no heart disease no stroke no diabetes wow i want that do you want that amen when i was woven together in the depths of the earth your i saw my unformed body all the 